this is a Huan Yang branded inverter. Um, the amusing thing about these is um, it's Chinese branded, but they actually apparently uh, were complaining about other Chinese companies that were cloning them, which is kind of funny. I guess China's becoming successful. So this is a, it's a, um, I don't know if this will come through. It's a, the, the one I bought is a, uh, a 2.2 kilowatt. Let's see, it's um, that one right there. Single and three phase, 220 volts input. And then the output is three phase, 10 amps. So 2.2 kilowatts is roughly three horsepower. Um, in my case, I care about, um, uh, I, my, my spindle motor is two horsepower, so I'm overspecified by 50%. Um, wow, look at how much space they want you to leave around the thing. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But it's actually, uh, check out the burking, burking resistor. It's uh, definitely chinglish. chinglish. Uh, while wiring the size and specification of wire should be selected and the wiring should be executed according to the other electrical engineering regulations to ensure safety. Uh. <laughs> I... Yeah, so these were these. I picked this principally because there's a number of. Uh, well, hey, actually, it looks like this is really fairly well documented. There's a bunch of people who've used these on the CNC zone forums, which is where I was looking. But it actually appears that um, the parameter functions are actually. I mean, it's it's Chinglish, but it's tractable Chinglish, and this is actually. Um, I guess this. I really have zero problems with this documentation. This is fairly decent. Um, so, the real challenge is going to be figuring out how to convince this to talk to the, uh, the CNC. Um, fault conditions, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the actual box. I bought this from uh, a, a US based distributor and I'm actually impressed because they shipped it, they got it to me in uh, a day and a half. I paid for this, uh, I think I bought it Saturday or Sunday night on eBay, and it's now Tuesday evening. You know, and I am about 150 miles from where the distributor are. They were in LA, and I'm a bit north of that, but that's still not terrible. So, actually, that's interesting. A lot of these have... Um, foam plug for this so that you can actually just use like straight up ethernet cable to mount the display remotely. Doesn't seem like it with this one. Mmm, smells like plasticizers. One thing I'm noticing is there's uh, a fair amount of space in there. It's not too densely populated. Uh, so we can look, to, looking down there, um, I've seen pictures, this whole back section is just a big heat sink. Um, and obviously we have a little, uh, how am I supposed to get that out? Does it go the other way? So, you know, there it goes. So there's a little, yeah, so we have a fan in there and then you can see these giant heat sink fans, heat sink fans. And then there's, um, I believe the, there's two big capacitors down at the bottom, which is also relatively good engineering, the capacitors are at the coldest end. So it actually has a warranty void if removed sticker. That's kind of surprising, it's a holographic thing. Anyways. It also doesn't seem to sit flat, unless it's leaning on something. Oh. So, uh... <laughs> uh. So, uh, yeah, let me find this. I don't know if I have a straight edge anywhere. Yeah, so, um, this is a straight. 
that we can see. It's got a little bit of a bulge. High quality injection molding. Obviously these are um, intended to be cut out where the wire goes in. Oops. Presumably this is made of the finest Chinese. Yep. So what do we have? We have control terminals. And then down there we have the actual uh, line input terminals. Self-evidently, this is where the motor goes. It's kind of cute. U, V, W, yep. And then there's the protective earth. So, given that apparently these screws are protected by the warranty screw, That's impressive. So these are not, I believe, intended to be used and serviceable, and yet they're still machine threaded. I'm not totally certain about that. It's possible that. Okay. So, first thing I notice, conformally coated. That's nice. Second thing I notice, hello, opto interrupters, and a relay. So I believe this is like an external contact closure for, you know, basically system stuff. So basically you can effectively, you can have the, this turn something else on when it comes up to power or something like that. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of opto-isolators. Opto These would, I would assume, be drivers for them. Um, I'm not sure how they're managing all of these I.O. lines off so few pins. Uh, board is quite heavily conformally coated. And we have a couple optos that appear to are just not populated. Wow, I can't even feel the those pads. This is so heavily coated. We have power and error LEDs which aren't visible out the front. So uh, this has power, forward, reverse, hertz, amps, and ROTT, which means something. I don't know what. Another little nice touch here is you can see all of these, uh, all of the connectors are hot slotted down. They've got, they've put some glue on them. So this is probably the controller for a bunch of this junk. If I can't chip the conformal coating off. So here's this part. It is a zero to six something eight a five zero four four three. Um, it's, it's, I would assume it's a microprocessor just based on the proximity of this crystal. That I, I'm pretty sure I see an XP branding on that. I almost make it out to the. Hang on. See if some light helps a little bit. So for HC one something something. So that's those are just jelly bean logic. That is uh, is that a TLO eight two? It looks like it. So that's just an op amp. That's pretty funny. Six. There's that part. What is that? And so it's just TTL logic, it looks like. Now we have to very carefully, well, actually, maybe not very carefully, this sticker is just coming right off. 
We have to very carefully uninstall the warranty. to see the interior. So, what do we have here? We have some kind of depressing soldering, for lack of a better term. I have to break this connector loose. There we go. Now this should just yep. pop loose. So there's the entirety of the rest of the system, apparently. Um, we have, yeah, definitely I'd qualify this as um, depressing soldering. So self-evidently we have our three outputs here, uh, two of which go through a current uh, sensor, one of which doesn't. Um, power inputs are over here, big ass bridge rectifier, switching relays of assortedness. Um, here are three optos, which I would assume are used, and then there's another three over here. I would assume those are the, the gate or probably base drive for the output devices capacitors, some sort of suppression, that's probably, I would bet that this section here is the switch mode power supply for the, uh, the control logic. The other thing we can notice is there's no microprocessor here, which means that the device in here, whatever this, whatever that part is, can presume, be presumed to actually be the entire controlling everything. It's going to be running these devices, so it must have, I would assume it has some internal pulses modulation generation. We can also see some uh, quality soldering down here. This board is partially conformally coated. Um, you can see there's like thoroughly pleasant flux here. So this is branded HYDQ inverter version 2.0. Um, this is nice. It actually has mobs on the inputs. And the other thing that's relevant is um, these mobs have actual isolation gaps machined into the PCB. So they're, the whoever designed this isn't completely useless. Um, another thing of note is you can see here there's these two very large uh, 560 microfarad um, can't, I'm trying to make out uh, I'm trying to read them through the grading because I don't see an easy way to get this, uh, the aluminium out, and, uh, yeah, because if you look down here, you can see that all these parts are soldered to the circuit board, and I don't know what retains the heat sink in here. It could just be press fit, doesn't feel like it. Um, yeah, so I'd, you'd have to go in and unbolt all that. Uh, anyways. Um, Capacitors are S O N G C O N Sunk Con branded five hundred sixty microfarads, four hundred volt parts, and there's two of them, but they are at least 105 degrees C rated, which is nice. Um, and then you can see there's a circuit board down there, which is like their mounting board. Um, another thing is, is it appears that I think that resistor there, from where it's placed, it looks like it's probably a bleeder resistor. I can't decide if I think they're mounted in parallel or not. Each one has four pins, though I assume two are mechanical supports. 
Um, looking down here, you can see there's our, our six power devices. One pull high, one pull low for each output leg. And then on the other side, we have... Oops, I'm making a mess. That's problematic. Okay, cool, didn't make a mistake. So you can see here's our big power rectifier, or bridge rectifier. And then actually, um, big bridge rectifier, and then we have solid core wire. Additionally, this uh, capacitor board seems to, well, it has, um, it only seems to have two large heavy duty connections. It has this and this. This is fairly light duty and it also runs down under the board which makes me think it's probably an earthing. Like, because uh, you can see it's running down here. And then we have, and that's basically it. So my assumption, yeah, this, this must be only, you know, a single bypass capacitor. Um, over here you can see we have a, uh, a two lead TO220 device with uh, manually extended solid core leads that run up to the circuit board here. That's kind of weird. And then you can see down there is the um, all the power devices and some oddly bent power device legs. It's uh, kind of crude. And then this section up here has a... I'm actually not too certain why there's this great big plastic thing under here. I don't necessarily see a reason for it. Um, and then this is the lead for the fan connects right there. And that's about all she wrote. There's really not much here. Let's... So here we're looking more closely down there. You can see the... Uh, look at those little caps tacked on there. They've got a... Looks like they've soldered wire onto some of the exposed copper traces, presumably for current handling capability. Um, my assumption would be that uh, this connection here is going to be one of the main edge ends. So these are obviously your output, so this can be pulled high or low. So I would assume there's another big power rail somewhere up in this area. Um, maybe on the other side of the board. Yeah, it is. If we, I don't know how visible it is, but if we look down there, you can see that very large power trace. So that's going to be the other power rail. If I can't convince it to, uh, let's see if we can read the part number. It's too, uh, too oblique an angle, unfortunately. My guess would be their IGBTs based on me not knowing anything. Um, there's our current output devices. Some of those interesting um, six pin optos of some variety. Um, looks like they're Fairchild P701. And each one of them has what looks to be a half watt resistor and a diode on the output and then there's a capacitor some sort of passives these ones don't have similar circuitry though we do have some um, less than great layout practice if you look in here you can see there's two traces joining at a sharp angle there that's not a good layout because they can catch acid sharp trace joins like that one down there are not ideal because if the etchant isn't flushed well uh, you can get a little kind of a little puddle of etchant that sits oops, in the uh, in the nook and kind of etches it out further and it'll have trace thinning. It's not really a problem. Most of the um, most of the stuff's too the, the quality uh, control for most of the production like circuit board houses is so good these days it's not really a problem anymore. There's our bridge rectifier and apparently this is lead free and some of that mediocre soldering. There's a uh, 6 watt 330 ohm resistor with a relay next to it that makes me assume I would guess that that's probably in rush uh, limitation so it charges those two giant caps up through the resistor and then like two seconds later it pulls in the relay and it cuts off you can also see from the conformal coating on there that I bet this was manually painted with conformal coating so that's a little circuit board with um, that's probably an opto. 
but I would assume that that's like a um, an off-the-shelf switch mode controller thing that you can just drop in to make your life easier. There's that uh, switch mode, actual switch mode transformer. Probably output rectification. We've got a big transistor here, which I bet is our K1120. I bet that's your main control transistor. Some sort of resistors, etc. They did certainly, um, they didn't seem to hold much back when it comes to actually, uh, like, trenching out stuff for creep resistance on the circuit board. There's more of them, and actually if we look over here, look at all of the slots they've cut into the board. And there's more under there. I, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. That's indicative, indicative of good design. Or, well, if not indicative of good design, it's indicative that somebody who is involved in manufacturing this knew enough to actually be aware that it was a potential problem. So then even if they went overboard with it, it's still better to have it than not have it. See, there's even more trench out slots there, though. It looks like that is a, um, a hand-reworked resistor mounted upside down. <laughs> Some leads coming out of there. There's another LED there. These are all... Uh, Let's see, who makes these capacitors? Let's see... What's that part down there? I can't make out the number. Um, so that is 25 volt, 1000 microfarads. I don't see a brand on it. Yeah, these are all um, JWC, I think. So all the capacitors are I would assume no name branded capacitors JWCO but they are all as far as I can see 105C rated which is at least nice yes yeah, so that's basically everything that's on that board it's impressively minimal how little it actually takes to make one of these things it's just mostly kind of knowing how to do the engineering behind it you can see here there's a uh, footprint for a TR 252 part that's not populated. I wonder what went there. And, um, yeah, I would bet that that device is a. It actually says H 80 degrees C on it. So that's. I would assume that that TO 220 device there is an over uh, temperature shutoff. It goes. It's soldered onto the bottom legs of this connector here. Um, circuit board. The fit and finish is kind of thoroughly mediocre, I would qualify it. Uh, I got email. Oops. So um, I would bet that these are all glued down if this is going like on a machine that vibrates heavily, but it's not, so I'll take that out. Oh, this is interesting. So, just looking down here, and look at these screws. There's a, uh, a metal bushing. I'm not too sure why they'd go like they do something like that for these screws, but that's quite nice. Um, Alright, so. To uh, tuck that through. All right. Go on like that. Make sure I'm pulling the warranty sticker out. So that's cute. So these hooks just hook into the vent grill up here. There's no actual like anything that's specific that's supposed to catch into. Um, yeah, you see, it just it just hooks into the vent. <laughs> that's neat engineering. So my my main comment about this is I'm not sure why it's so big. Probably for expectations, but they could. I don't see why they couldn't have cut you know a good inch off of the depth of this. Oh, got me a mess of the sticker. Yeah, it went back on well enough. 
but uh, yeah, it seems decently made. I mean, they've cut corners, but it seems like they've cut corners in places where it doesn't really matter. So I guess the next thing I have is to wire it in.